guys, welcome back. I am so excited to be back with you. I'm excited to share with you that I've got a brand new series that's gonna last throughout the entire year because this past Christmas, 2021, I was not able to create half the things that I wanted to create, half the ideas that I had, and I was kind of frustrated about it. So I thought, you know what? Let's just keep on creating Christmas throughout the entire year so on the 25th of every month, you're gonna get a little bonus video. You're going to get a Christmas DIY, a Christmas thrift flip, or some sort of idea for you to create for your store, your booth, or even just a DIY for your home. So today's video is all about ornaments. So I first made one of these in 2020, and I used some IOD, I used a mold and some clay, and I have loved this ornament. Like it just, it hung on my tree. It's a little secret. For 2020, we never put our Christmas tree up. Well, the one in the living room we did, but our bedroom Christmas tree, which is our family tree, the when the girls put all of their ornaments and things like that on, things, things got crazy and went a little sideways. And then we like rented a warehouse and opened a shop and all the things. So I never got that tree down. So anyway, I enjoyed this ornament on that Christmas tree all year long. So I thought what better ornament or what better project to start 12 months of Christmas with than this one. So I'm gonna show you how to take one of the little plastic dollar, you can see how large this one is too. Like this is one of the larger plastic balls from Dollar Tree and we're gonna turn it into something really fancy, really high end that you can enjoy for yourself or you can even make a set or two to sell. All right, are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, I know my plungers are funny, but they make great ornament holders. So I'm giving this a coat of black spray paint just to help adhesion with my paint. All right, so we're dusting this mold with some cornstarch so that it doesn't stick. And I'm warming up the clay here just to make it pliable. Gotta make it soft. All right, we're just smushing this down into the mold really well, getting in all the little nooks and crannies and using a little scraper tool to get off the excess and smooth out the back. Don't be afraid to bend your mold. They are so flexible, you're not going to damage them, but just roll it backwards and let your design fall right out. Alright, y'all know I love my tight bond quick and thick. It is my favorite glue to glue on clay castings. Uh, the thickness just allows everything to stay. Right here, I'm just measuring these um, castings out so that they fit appropriately because I just want those little corner-like pieces to fit and touch. And so we're just spreading out the glue on the back here and smushing it down onto the mold very, very gently. We don't want to, you know, distort the design, but we just want to make sure that the edges are adhered because we don't want that to curl up once it's dry. All right, I'm gonna take that glue brush and just go very gently around the edge, smooth out any little glue lumps, and also if there's any little spots that are sticking up, get a little bit more glue under there and press them back down. It is time for paint, my favorite part. I'm going in with some DIY weathered wood. I'm not worrying too much on the first coat. As you can see here on the second coat, we're covering any spots that we didn't get the first time and covering any cracks as the castings dried. Okay, I'm gonna show you two different wax applications here. The first one, I'm gonna start with some clear wax and I'm using my one inch JRV stencil brush. These make awesome wax brushes for smaller projects. So you can see how much that's deepening the color here. That is totally normal. It's gonna lighten up again as it dries. So this is just kind of a barrier for your white wax. So the second one here, I'm going straight with the white wax because I want you to sh see the difference. I end up in the end loving the straight white wax first. I feel like it just makes it look a little bit more like stone or cement, which is pretty cool. And then I'm wiping back the excess here. So you can see like how kind of stark it still is even after wiping back. Just wiping back all the excess here, getting any uh, white wax that's just left behind. So this is pretty well what it looks like. You can see it's pretty white. So I wiped up a good bit of the excess white out of my brush here. It still looks like it's white, but I did go back in with a dab of clear. And you can see how that's kind of acting as an eraser. 
So if you ever get too much wax, colored wax on your project, you can always go back with some clear too to take some of it back off. So I'm showing you here what the white wax on top of the clear wax looks like. And see as you wipe it back, you're getting a good bit of the white wax back off. So I love this look, but I do like the white wax straight on here a little bit better. These are the good times with you, baby, this year. Those ornament caps, a coat of weathered wood so that they match. And we're going to go over those with a little bit of our wax embellishments also. I love this one. So I'm using some DIY Golden Rule, which is just a gold gilding wax. And just using my finger to go gently on the details. I don't want this one to go in the cracks and crevices like the white. I want this one to sit right on top. Sorry, I'm out of frame here. We're going to come back in in just a second. All right, so I'm taking that gold wax and going just on a little bit of the detail of the little caps also. All right, it's time to finish these up with some hangers. I'm going to do a couple of different options here for you so that way you can see the different ways you can embellish them. We can finish them off pretty fancy here with some gold sparkly ribbon and we can use some twine and bows. There's just a lot of variety in how to finish these off. This bow came out of a multi-pack from the Walmart Christmas section and I think it was like six or eight or something like that for just a couple of bucks. So I'm taking the little bread twisty tie looking thing off of there and I'm going to let the twine just be the part in the center that cinches it together. All right, y'all, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some inspiration. Um, go ahead and make yourself a playlist of 12 months of Christmas or Christmas ideas, whatever you want to call it, but go ahead and save it. That way, when you're looking for a new idea, come July, August, September, whenever, you've got it. You can go back to it and refresh your memory and you are going to be ahead of the game this year for the Christmas season. So I love these ornaments. I hope that you do too. Leave me a comment below and let me know which finished one you liked the best. I think that my personal favorite ended up being the gold hanger with the gold bow. I just, with the gold wax, I think that one just turned out perfect. It's just, ugh, I don't even know how to explain it. So anyway, let me know which one you like or how would you tweak it? Would you uh, make it a little bit more rustic and leave off the gold wax and do like a twine hanger with a more rustic type bow so that you have that mix of rustic and glam? Let me know. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss one single 12 months of Christmas video. I'll see you soon. All I want is to spend this day with you. Let me give you a Christmas moment.